Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. Welcome to this tutorial where we'll be seeing how to use an amazing AI tool to generate some very real looking headshots completely for free. So this tool is called design.ai. You can see it in front of you before it was called styler.ai. I have given the link to this tool as well as the images that we will be using in this slightly long tutorial. So you'll be able to download them from the description of the video. The links are given there. And you can see some of the transformations in front of you. This undoubtedly is one of the best free AI tools I've seen for headshot generations. And the reason for that is, I'm gonna be talking about this a bit later on, it maintains the structure from the original image really, really well. So before I start really showing you how to do this, a couple of important things. One is the moment you create your free account on design, you're gonna get certain amount of credits which are gonna reflect here. Uh, sometimes this, Menu comes on the top, this time it's coming on the left. But anyway, you will be seeing your credits. The first time you create your account, you'll get 50 credits for free. And then every 24 hours, you get 30 credits. So they replenish. So even if you run out of credits, you will have them tomorrow. So that means you can use this tool a lot. However, this doesn't mean that you can use it 30 times per day. Because, for example, the tool that we will be using for headshot generation, uh, generation that costs 8 credits per generation. So maybe you'll be able to do it for one image per day, which is also pretty decent, okay? The second thing I wanna show you is that you just saw some transformations before, right? Now, just to show you how amazing this tool is, here are the same images, but when I had used, you know, the original image with another free AI tool, okay? Which kind of gives very mediocre results like you can see in front of you, right? You can even see in this image, uh, no, she does not really look real in the one that was generated by the other free AI tool, but with design, it, it just looks very real. I even tried it on my own photograph, as you can see in front of you, and you can see like the middle picture, it almost turned me into some like a kid, you know, it just uh, wasn't real at all. But if you see the generation from design, it looks really real. So like I said, it maintains the structure really well. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's get started. We're gonna be editing two portraits, the male portrait and the female portrait that you saw. Uh, so let's get started first with the female portrait and you would have got your hands on the image. And what you have to do is once you are here, you can actually, it's a pretty cumbersome interface. So it's tough to find the tool, but if you go down, you'll see this tool called AI Profile Picture. Okay, that's what this tool is called. So just click on that. And sometimes the only downside, this website just lags a bit sometimes, okay? But trust me, that's the only downside because otherwise it does a pretty good job. By default, you get uh, this picture already given by them. So just click on it and just hit delete, okay? So that we are ready to put our own photograph here. So first of all, let's do that for the female portrait. All right, so we've got our image here. Now, there's a lot of uh, space here. So what I'm, before we start using this tool, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crop this down a bit. So I'm just crop it here. Though that is not 100% necessary, but yeah, I think now it's better. So this is the main interface that you get for the uh, headshot generation or the profile picture generation. And you can clearly see that this is way more advanced if you've been following my past tutorials where I've been showing some free AI uh, head generation tools. They are simply one click. It's a one click process. You upload the image, you hit generate, and they generate the image for you. And it doesn't give you any sort of control. But here you can see even on the free plan, they're first of all allowing you to either work with the default prompt which is given, uh, which is professional portrait of a woman smiling at a camera wearing a suit, which is good. But I can also add anything, right? I mean, uh, against a white background or so, something like that. Okay, the point is you can see that I am able to uh, change the prompt also, which is very rare on a free plan for an AI tool. Okay, so first of all, they allow that. Right now, we're just gonna stick uh, to the original because I think this is a pretty good prompt for what we're trying to do, turn it into a professional headshot. Uh, then you have something called a style intensity, which just means when it comes to the color and basically just the style element, the design element of whatever is happening in the original image, how close should the generation be to that? So you can see by default, they set it to something like 0.6, and I've done a lot of experiments with this. 0.6 is probably right. Because what is more important than the colors and every, everything else? Because remember, we are turning this into a professional portrait. So we actually, even if the colors change or things change, we don't really mind that, right? What is more important to us is 
the portrait should look real. And that's where the next option is very important, which I've not seen in any other tool when it comes to uh, headshot generation, which is called structure match. And this just means we're telling this tool how close the generated image should be to the structure. By structure, they just mean like, for example, if this is the structure, like for example, her outline, you're seeing this outline, right? So even the generated image will maintain the same outline. Because like I said, if you've been following my headshot tutorials, a lot of times you must have seen that when we upload an image like this and when we hit generate, it can produce good results, but then sometimes it totally changes the image. For example, it can just be her standing somewhere else in a completely different pose. They take the liberty to change that. They don't give you an option to control that. But here you do have that control by restricting it by this option which says uh, structure match. Now right now, we're going to leave it on the default which is on 0.5 which is very similar. Obviously, if you take it down this side, you're, uh, you know, you're basically telling this tool that yeah, we are giving you the liberty to change or you can keep it really close. This is going to come handy in our next edit when we edit the male portrait because there's going to be an issue there which we'll need to solve. But for most of the times, when you just have a normal image like this, either 0.6 or 0.5 does a pretty good job. Because if you make it too high, then you won't really see too many changes, okay? But if it's too low, then you can just see another person altogether, which is also not good. So something like this is fine. But like I said, we'll see what happens when you push this uh, on this extreme later on, okay? Uh, then there's this uh, color match option that again, like you do, do you want to preserve the color tones and all? Again, I've tried... Uh, with this and I couldn't really see too much of a difference to be frank because it anyway maintains the color and we actually wanted to change the colors a bit okay that's because again this is going to be uh, we are pretending that this is the shot that will be generated will be inside a studio so this is not going to be outdoor lighting so that means the color tones will look a bit different so we don't mind if we turn this off okay again things like face match yes it should be as close to the face as possible and high quality yes we want high quality and that's it there's Nothing, this is the most important setting here, okay? And then we are going to hit generate. So these images will come here. You'll get four generations and it's gonna cost you, you can see here, I have 24 credits here. It's gonna go down to 16 the moment these generations come, okay? So just be a bit careful with that. So let's wait for these results and they are pretty much here. All right, so you can see that our generations have started to come. If you hover over them, you will be able to see the generations and you can see that it really tries to maintain that outline, right? Just look at her neck. And overall body it's pretty much in the same shape and I'm soon going to be talking about what to do with the face in order to improve it but one thing is there this tool is still not very good when it comes to fingers okay so if you have an option obviously go for the uh, output which gives you uh, hands without the fingers or the hand should not be in basically in the frame uh, so something like maybe the number two or number four I think this one looks the best because even you can see it's very close to what we've got here Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit download and it's going to ask you, basically give you a couple of options. And to be frank, there's no need for this because on the free plan, everything's already selected by default. You can't really select anything else. Upscaling is not a problem. We'll do it towards the end using another AI free tool. It will have a watermark on the free plan. So I'm going to hit download and let's see this image because there's going to be one issue with this. All right. So you can see that this doesn't look bad at all. But if you compare this with the original, the only thing is some of the facial features are not exact. And that is a very, very common problem. But like I said, the other generation tools, they mess up the structure. That means the outline is different. They give a different pose. And that even makes the job tougher uh, to get the realism into the generated headshot. Because here's the thing. If you have a choice between the face not coming well but the structure coming well, that's always a good choice to have. And that's the choice you should be making. Because what? Because the thing is, if the structure is the same as the original image, it's very easy to change the face simply by using a free face swapping tool. But if the structure, dif uh, if the structure is different, if the, if the generated image is completely different from the original one, then even those face swapping tools like we're going to be using right now can struggle. So this is a good problem to have. It's not bad at all. Because now all we need to do is just change the face or swap the face with the original. Okay, so let's do that using a free face swapping tool. So we are on what I consider one of the best free face swapping tools. I've shown this a couple of times in my tutorials. This is called Remaker AI. And they have a free face swapping tool. So let's upload our original image here. And in the target image section, we're going to upload the original photograph, the outdoor photograph. So let's do that. All right. So you can see that now both the images are ready. We're simply going to hit swap. And 
in this tool, you don't even have to create an account and they allow you to use this tool. So that's amazing. But if you do create an account with them, you get, uh, I think, a lot of credits. I forgot the exact number, but they're very liberal. Okay, so you can see now we've got this image. Let's hit download and you can clearly see this looks better. So if we compare all the three now, you can see, of course, yeah, design AI struggles a bit with the face, but that's not a problem. Structure is always more important in these shots, okay? So now we've been able to do this, uh, and this was slightly a convenient image, okay? Because uh, it worked out well for us. There was really no problem. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try on uh, things with the male portrait because there, that particular guy has some features which can tough, which can be tough for AI to deal with, okay? So let's start that process of, process of editing the male portrait also. And then finally, I'll also be showing you a lot of other things after we have finally processed that image, like how to change the eye direction, how to make the image sharper, how to upscale it, how to even edit uh, some things in Photoshop because we will need to do that in a challenging image. So let's see the second edit also. All right, so this time we've got this image and this was a big challenge for me because I tried over 10 different free AI head gener uh, headshot generation tools they were simply not able to do the job. Like we saw one of the images before from one of those free tools and you can see that just didn't look good. This was the only free AI tool which at least came close to producing a real image from this because you can see, right, he's got very unique things going on like his hairstyle hair, uh, the structure, the this whole bone thing going on on his, uh, you know, the shape of the jaw. Uh, it's He just has very uh, unique features on his face and they were tough to, uh, you know, recreate in AI until I, un, until I found uh, design. So let's get started again. We have this. Uh, we can, we're gonna let everything here remain the same, but let's just call it man smiling at the camera wearing the suit. Now this time I wanna definitely go ahead with this because when you have, because I edited this portrait using design a couple of times and what I realized was the trick to getting uh, this right in such a challenging scenario is to actually generate two images. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, in one of the images, we're gonna actually increase the structure slider here. That is so that even if the image generated is very close to what we have in the original, we can use that for things like, let's say the face or the hair. And the creative parts which are acceptable in areas where, which don't have to be unique, like the body, we can take that from the one where it's not too similar, where we are giving the liberty to the AI tool, okay? So it's gonna become clear when I do this. So let's push this to, let's say, something like quite strict 0.8 for our first generation, okay? Uh, we're gonna leave everything else the same. Like I said, this is the most important thing. And let's hit generate and let's see the results here. All right, so you can start to see the results here and now you'll understand why or what exactly structure means. Because if you look at these images, look at our prompt, professional portrait of a man Wearing a suit, right? So here, we pretty much, except for one generation, we don't have a suit anywhere else, right? So it's why, because it's actually noticing the outlines of that jacket and it's trying to create something similar because we've told it to be quite strict. But we are gonna be using and this for the, the unique elements like his face, structure, uh, you know, the, the jaw, the hair and all these things. So we're gonna find out which one looks probably the closest to him, okay? And I think number one is the best because that's where the structure of his face matches the most and the hair matches the most. So we're gonna download this. This will be our first image, okay? But we're not gonna be using this. Now you can see the face is bad, but now you know that we don't have to worry about the face part because we can always do the face swap later on. But now for the second generation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the structure match to something more liberal, like let's say point, I don't mind going for point three, and then we're gonna just hit generate and let's wait for the results here. All right, so you can see the results here and this time you can see that he looks very different than the original. But if you look at from the body point of view, this looks much better because you can see this a uh, nice looking suit here. This also looks nice. So what we're gonna do is probably we're gonna stick to maybe, because here we can make any choice, it doesn't really matter. So let's go with this because this has the tie also. And we're gonna download this also. So we're gonna now go over to Photoshop, combine these two images, take the best parts from each, and then go back to the face swapping tool to finally see the final result. So first of all, let's go over to Photoshop. All right, so I actually ended up downloading the first image because when I look closer, this one looked more real. So we've got this and what I've done is I've opened up both the images in Photoshop and I've put them on top of each other. So on this is the layer on top, you can see background copy and underneath that, 
we have this. So if you look at this, the main difference is that in this, we just need to change the hair because his original hair are more like the one which were uh, from this image where the structure was more restrictive, right? So we just need to take the hair from here. So what we can do is we can just create a layer mask here and take one of the brushes and just run it to make sure it's on black. Start painting on the parts on the hair. Now, don't worry if you slightly go out of bounds like this because there's a change in the color of the background you're gonna to start to notice the halo there. But that's not a problem because in Photoshop, we can always use AI itself to correct this, okay? So we've got this, now we've got the best from both the worlds, and now what we can do is just to correct this, let's first of all create a new layer, let's stamp everything onto a new layer uh, using the shortcut control command, alt option shift E. And now this part where we are seeing this halo-like thing, we can just encircle this using the lasso tool and just use generative fill on an empty prompt to correct it. Sometimes this can be a bit of a hit and miss, but it's still, even if it takes two, three generations to get the result, it's still faster than using any of the manual tools. So we use generative fill and hit generate and let's wait for the results here. And you can see that that has just fixed this. We get three results here. And I think we can choose, what do you think? Yeah, I think this one looks the best out of all. Now I'm gonna export this photograph all right, so I just exported that image from Photoshop. We are ready for our next step, which is to do the final face swap here. So both the images are ready. Let's just hit swap. And you can see the final image is ready in front of us. Let's hit download. And you'll be able to see that this now even looks more real to his face. So again, you can see the structure very, very similar to the original image. Now, all this while we've been using free AI tools, so sometimes the quality of the image can go down a bit. So let's use another free AI tool to correct this. And also, if you notice, he slightly, especially after the face swap, because the face swap also changes the eyes a bit. It's more uh, towards the original now, but then he's looking slightly away from the camera now. So we're gonna correct both these issues, okay? We are going to first of all fix his uh, eye direction so that to make sure he's looking straight into the camera and then we are going to improve the quality of this image massively okay so let's do these two steps so in order to change the direction of the eyes you can use reshot.ai eyes editor the link is given in the description and doesn't look too great but it does the job just upload the image here right so the image is uploaded and sometimes you can't really see the full image that's okay as long as you can just see the eyes you get a little joystick here just move it wherever you want to change the eye direction to. So we just, it's very sensitive, so just do this slowly, but you can see now he's looking right into the camera. So we've got this step done. Let's hit download. Another A free AI tool that we use. So again, don't expect good quality, but finally we are going to go to an AI tool which is called photorestore.io. I've shown this in another one of my tutorials, which was about restoring very old washed up images, but we can use it even for normal images also. So the moment you go here, Again, the link is in the description. Just upload this final image that we downloaded. And the moment you do that, you don't even have to click anywhere. It just starts the process on its own. And you're gonna see that this produces a huge difference in the shot. So you can see the results will be here. And you can see final result now. The original now starts to actually look blurred because now you're actually seeing the difference between the two. And finally, if you wanted to, of course, upscale it, increase its resolution further, the tool that I usually use is Upscale AI or Upscale Media. And then you can increase the size to two times, four times, or eight times, even on a free plan. But I think for social media, this is more than enough. And finally, let's have a look. So we started off from the original, then we got the result from design, then we took it over to Photoshop and we created a composite, then we did the face swap and the little eyes change, and finally, after making it go through photo restore, you can see the final result. So yes, so this was a tricky photograph, but we only used free AI tools to achieve it. And I think this is okay, because a lot of, time, a lot of times people criticize AI, but you have to understand one thing. If you, for example, in this image, the kind of image we went from, even in real life, it can happen that that image may not look exactly similar to the final result. So if you were to click a photo outdoors of yourself and then you were to do a studio photo shot, like a photo, photo shoot of yourself, like a headshot shoot, there's a good chance that both the photos, you won't look exactly the same. So sometimes I feel we criticize AI too much, we are nitpicking, but I think we need to cut it some slack because I think it is definitely improving and it's not perfect, but it does the job. So I hope that you like this video and in case you want to follow along 
more of my experiments because I'm experimenting with a lot of different AI tools, especially free AI tools and how they can help photographers, not just photographers, but people who actually don't want to use photographers, like in this case, get their job done, then definitely don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.